Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning for this important uh, infrastructure announcement in the ambitious city of Hamilton. I'd like to welcome and joining us are the Honorable Philomena Tassi, Minister of Labor and Member of Parliament for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Donna Scali, Member of Parliament uh, for Flamborough Glanbrook, Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Uh, myself and also joining us are Councillor Maureen Wilson, Councillor Jason Farr, and Councillor Narendra Nan, as well as uh, some supporting staff from Public Works and Planning uh, and Economic Development uh, that can answer some of the more specific media questions a little later on. So th again, thank you for joining us. Welcome. I'd like now to invite uh, the Honourable, hardworking Philomena Tassi, <laughs> Minister of Labour and Member of Parliament for Hamilton West Bank, Castro Dundas. Uh, who has uh, been uh, working very, very hard, not only on issues around pandemic, but issues around uh, coming out of pandemic and economic stimulus. And that's part of uh, some of the announcements that are happening here today. So Minister Tassi, welcome and good morning. Well, thanks, Mayor Fred. It's great to be here with you this morning. Uh, it's also a pleasure to be joined by uh, MPP Adonna Skelly and uh, Councillors uh, Nan, Wilson and Farr. Um, as well as the city team. I'm here, as you know, on behalf of my friend and colleague, the Honourable Catherine McKenna, Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, to make this uh, great announcement for Hamilton. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm participating from the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples within the territory covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, as well as the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. So folks, look, we know that these are unprecedented times. I've said that on many occasions. For over a year now, we've been dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and learning how to cope with this new reality. We are in a health crisis, but we're also in an economic crisis. And while this pandemic has been challenging for all of us, we've had an opportunity to build back better and stronger. We have an opportunity to build stronger and more resilient communities. Communities, businesses, and families have been dramatically impacted throughout this pandemic, and frontline workers continue to be our heroes. On June 9, 2021, the Honourable Catherine McKenna, Minister of Infrastructure and Communities and Provincial Partners, announced over $115 million to support municipalities in the Greater Hamilton and Toronto area as they respond to the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, I am proud to share that the federal government is investing over $5.9 million of that funding toward five projects. $2.6 million for the HVAC upgrades program, which will replace the HVAC systems at various different public buildings in Hamilton. $1.2 million for the Gage Park walkways redevelopment, which will rehabilitate the walkways. $768,000 for the redevelopment of the Andrew Warbutton Memorial Park and Pipeline Trail, $800,000 for public service counter enhancements, including municipal service centers, public health clinics, senior centers, recreation centers, and libraries throughout Hamilton, Ontario, and $456,000 for the Health Center Connector Cycling Route. These investments will improve public spaces like Gage Park Walkways and the Andrew Warburton Memorial Park and Pipeline Trail which will be available for Hamiltons to enjoy for many years to come. HVAC upgrades will improve, improve workplaces, making them more comfortable, safer, and healthier. Investing in Hamilton's infrastructure means continuing to build our city's reputation as an attractive place to invest in and to move to for businesses and individuals. As part of our COVID-19 Resiliency Stream Fund, the federal government is providing 80% of total costs for these projects, the remaining 20% is covered by the Government of Ontario. Canada's infrastructure plan invests in thousands of projects, creates jobs across the country, and builds cleaner, more inclusive communities. In Ontario, we've invested over $13.9 billion through our infrastructure plan in more than 3,200 projects and counting. The upgrades we are announcing today will help Hamilton continue to grow and become more prosperous. Hamilton needs more businesses to invest and to create employment here. We also want to provide residents with safe places to work and beautiful accessible trails to enjoy. 
this is what this announcement is all about. We need to build today for the future that we want tomorrow. Let's keep on working together to build a more prosperous, more inclusive future filled with opportunities that are accessible to everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Minister Tassi. It was, uh, it has always been in my time uh, here, uh, a co great collaboration with the, uh, the federal government and the relationship that we have. And when we work together, we can do so much more. And uh, th these investments are gonna make a difference for not only today, but our future city. So thank you so much. And I'll turn it over now to our member of provincial parliament, Don Donna Skelly, who's working hard on the provincial level to help us through this pandemic and also look at uh, what, what, what does the post pandemic period look like? How can we stimulate economy? How can we make investments that are gonna help our future cities continue to prosper and grow? So. MP Donna Skelly, thank you for your ongoing work, and I uh, invite you to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, good morning, Minister Tassi, and to the councillors who are joining us this morning. And thank you all for being here for this really terrific announcement. It's a, a terrific funding announcement for the future of the city of Hamilton. Our government has declared from day one of the pandemic that the health and well being of Ontarians is our top priority. <clears throat> And we know that the city of Hamilton, like many communities across Ontario, on the front lines of the fight against COVID-19, need help to ensure that their municipal and community infrastructure is not only safe, but reliable. And that's why we have been taking decisive action to support families, to support businesses and communities, while continuing to look ahead to see what more we can do. Now, today's announcement includes more than $7.4 million joint funding for the city of Hamilton to improve, as you've heard already, local infrastructure. It includes money for public service counter enhancements, uh, HVAC upgrades for municipal buildings. The total provincial investment in these projects is nearly one and a half million dollars. The funding will help the city of Hamilton address critical infrastructure needs that have been exacerbated because of COVID-19. Our government will contribute $310,000 towards redeveloping the Gage Park walkways, $192,000 to redevelop the Andrew Warburton Memorial Park and Pipeline Trail in Hamilton, nearly $671,000 for various HVAC upgrade programs in municipal buildings, including recreation centers and libraries, $200,000 to upgrade public service counters at various public buildings, including recreation center and libraries, to install physical barriers between staff and clients to protect against the spread of COVID-19, and $114,000 for the upgrade of HVAC units at the Acton Station. Of course, these investments underscore our government's commitment to protect the health and safety of Ontarians and to support municipalities throughout the pandemic. I know that the city of Hamilton is greatly appreciative of it, and I look forward to continue to work with all of you to ensure that Hamilton gets even more money to uh, help as we move past COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, MP Skelly. Uh, again, a, a great opportunity for uh, the federal, provincial, and municipal governments to, uh, to come together and work in the interest of our people and ensure that their future infrastructure has uh, opportunity as well as uh, viability attached to it as uh, our cities continue to grow. So thank you so very much. Uh, I could say on my behalf, on the city's behalf, that we are grateful for this ongoing collaborative partnership we have with our federal and provincial governments. It is, uh, we, can, we can do much, much more together than we can do apart. And uh, that uh, I think has been demonstrated throughout the pandemic. Uh, even though there may have been occasional differences of opinion, by and large, the collaboration has actually helped all of us get through uh, this global challenge uh, on a localized level uh, through the province and right across the country. So your, your collaboration and effort is critically important, and certainly cities want to be very much a part of that ongoing work <clears throat> to ensure, I, lo I love allergy season, uh, to ensure that uh, that we continue to get the kinds of investments that will help us build back better. And I do want to ask um, uh, Minister Tassi to pass along our gratitude to uh, Catherine McKenna, our former Hamiltonian, but uh, Minister of Infrastructure, and as well uh, MP Skelly to uh, to Premier Ford, who has uh, you know steadfastly remained 
committed to helping Hamilton grow, and I really appreciate it. And if you could pass on your thanks to him, I'll I'll, I'll do that uh, myself as well. But uh, you'll probably see him before I do. So please share our gratitude, and uh, we continue to work on uh, making our cities better. And I know that uh, Councillor Rula would have liked to have joined us today, but uh, he was unable to do so. But he uh, he certainly has been uh, instrumental as well, and as part of the consultations with resident residents through town halls to help him create some of these uh, master plans for the recreational development. So thank you all very much. I'm now gonna turn it over to uh, Gemma Spadafora in my office to lead us through some media questions. Gemma, if you'll take it away. And we do have staff here from uh, Kirk Weaver, the manager of budgets and fiscal policy, finance and corporate uh, services. We have Cynthia Graham uh, with us as well, the manager of landscape architecture services, public works department and Brian Hollingsworth our Director of Transportation Planning and Parking that can answer very specific questions on the projects that are being identified today. So Gemma, if you would, lead us through the, uh, the media inquiry. Thank you, Mayor Eisenberger. We have four media partners joining us today for the media Q&A. We will start with one question and one follow-up for each reporter. First question goes to Jonathan Vise from CHCH. Jonathan, you can go ahead. Sorry, is that, um, sorry, my name is Emily, I'm from CHCH News. How are you today? Oh, it's, I saw Jonathan. Okay, Emily, go ahead. Sorry, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, please ask your oh, question. Perfect, sorry about that. Um, so, um, Mayor Fudd Eisenberger, uh, can you say if Hamilton will be doing anything um, for Canada Day to mourn the children discovered in Armark Graves and residential schools? Uh, quick answer to that is we're we're going to retain our, our flags at half mast as a result of this uh, latest discovery, and uh, there you know our, our Canada Day I would say is is going to be muted somewhat. Uh, we are going to participate with uh, I think Heritage Canada that's going to have a, a virtual uh, Canada Day. Uh, celebrations uh, happening right across the country and we're going to tap into that. I can tell you that uh, RBC, who uh, was a sponsor for many of our Canada Day events here in Hamilton and right across the country, in fact, have decided not to uh, participate this year. So some of the more active events will not be held, uh, but our virtual Canada Day uh, acknowledgement uh, will take place uh, on Canada Day through a virtual, virtual connection to uh, Heritage Canada's uh, display of Her Canada Day. For sure. Um, sorry, if I get a follow up, um, do you think Canada Day should go forward this year in light of the discoveries? Well, difficult question. And, uh, you know, certainly the, the discoveries, the, uh, the, the, the graves that are being found or have been, have been uh, I guess, refound uh, are, are concerning for sure. But, uh, you know, Canada is a great country and I think we should uh, continue to celebrate our great Canadian uh, tradition, uh, warts and all. Uh, so, uh, so that we uh, could at least, uh, you know, develop that kind of uh, great sense of unity that we want to continue to promote. And uh, even though that unity isn't perfect for everyone, it is still an aspiration that I think we need to continue to advance and work towards. So I'm, uh, I'm very keen to continue to celebrate our great country. Uh, but I'm also keen on, on uh, acknowledging some of the, the, the challenges and warts that uh, come with uh, the, the historical context that we uh, continue to talk about. So those are important issues. None of them should be ignored. But uh, you know, abolishing Canada Day doesn't, uh, doesn't help us uh, in that regard. I think we need to continue to look for ways to unify our country, unify our people, come to common ground, and uh, celebrate the great uh, multi multi multicultural mosaic that Canada is. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mayor Eisenberger. Next question goes to Bobby Rostova from CBC Hamilton. Bobby, please go ahead. Thank you very much. I hope everyone is having a good morning. Um, my first question, uh, do we have a timeline for when these projects are gonna be implemented, when we're gonna start to see this work actually take form? Yeah, let me turn that to uh, some of our uh, city staff who can, uh, you know, identify the the timelines. Obviously, it's economic stimulus, so uh, we want all of this to happen in the uh, short term, within the next uh, year or or so. And so, um, uh, which of our staff, Cynthia Graham or 
Brian Hollingsworth, did you want to address uh, kind of timelines on the projects you're involved with? Hi there, Cynthia Graham, Manager of Landscape Architectural Services with Public Works. The two projects that my team is leading are the Gage Park Walkways Project and the Andrew Warburton Memorial Park and Pipeline Trail Project. Both of those are anticipated to start in the near future. I think we have a, a shovels in the ground date for the Andrew Warburton Project um, the second week of July and with the Gage Park Walkways to start soon after. Completion target is December 31st of this year. Okay. And Cynthia, you might as well stay on the call. Keep your video on so we can see you. And uh, Brian? Hi, Brian Hollingworth, Director of Transportation Planning and Parking. Uh, our project uh, for cycling infrastructure, which we've named the Healthcare Connector, connects two major institutions, uh, McMaster and uh, Hamilton General Hospital. And it's really aimed at uh, uh, building um, better infrastructure for all ages and abilities, cyclists, uh, and filling in some of the critical gaps and providing convenient routes for uh, essential workers. And uh, we are ready to go on the ground. Uh, we've uh, selected these projects to uh, match the timelines of this, this program. A lot of it involves um, concrete barriers to protect cyclists, uh, which can be installed very readily. And other parts of the project are uh, already designed. So we're quite excited. Great, Brian, thank you. And your answer was twice as good because you're on the call twice. So good job, thank you. Back to, uh, back to you, Jenna. Thank you. Um, next question goes to Kevin Warner. Kevin Warner, please go ahead. Kevin, if you're trying to speak, we, we don't I have- I only got one question, by the way. Sure. Oh. Can I ask my second one? Oh, apologies, yes. No worries, <laughs> it's all good. Um, my second question is, we've been hearing from uh, people in the community for a while that, that we should be expanding shelter space, uh, affordable housing. I'm just wondering, um, what was the decision to go with um, HVAC upgrades, park upgrades, that sort of thing, rather than, than some sort of housing or, or shelter upgrades? Um, I might tackle that, um, um, Bobby. Yeah, so we, we are doing a lot of that uh, work and, and through separate separate funding pools. So, you know, this is, uh, this is not to be compared to you know, other projects, this is, uh, you know, other other projects that have value uh, going forward. So HVAC updates are, are critically important for decent quality of life for people in our community. So we want to make sure that uh, our facilities have uh, have a good uh, quality standard in terms of use, as well as uh, living arrangements. And, and on the on the housing side, there are there is much happening. Actually, just recently, we, we received one hundred and fifty four million dollars. I recall the number. Some of it loan, some of it grant, uh, and some of it funded uh, by uh, contributions from the city for additional housing developments in our community. So we're we're working very actively on providing uh, new shelter space, expanded shelter space, uh, new housing opportunities. Uh, you know, we continue that effort, and that isn't going to abate. Uh, that doesn't mean all of our funding is going to go to those projects. There are other areas that also need attention. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, Bobby. Next question goes to Kevin Warner. Kevin, please go ahead. Yeah, so I was wondering if you, if you could break down the um, financial uh... Are you thinking or did we lose you? Kevin, we don't have sound on you. Are you able to Ask the question again. Am I, can I? Yes, hello? please go ahead. Yep, good. I just wanted a financial breakdown, break, break, breakdown between the federal and provincial governments on these funding projects. Uh, good Who's question. Who? I'm going to ask Kirk Weaver. If you're Kirk, if you're on the call, how does it? Uh, how does our contribution compare with the, the provincial and federal one? Uh, good morning. It's Kirk Weaver, manager of budgets and fiscal policy. The, the projects for this program are funded 80% um, uh, federal and 20% from the provincial. Um, for the city's costs are, are only for those costs that are uh, ineligible under this program, which are typically project management costs. Uh, so they're 100% funded um, essentially um, by federal and provincial contributions. Great, thank you. Kevin? Uh, thank you. And, and I guess this is to the mayor. Um, 
I was wondering if the city has a plan in place to uh, address uh, uh, homeless encampments. Uh, last year was a big deal. It will it be a big deal this year as well. Uh, it, you know, the, the encampment issue has been with us uh, for a long, long time. This is not uh, news, uh, absolutely amplified through the pandemic. And, and you recall some of the challenges we had at the City Hall forecourt, a number of other locations, uh, including, uh, you know, across the street off of uh, Ferguson Avenue. Uh, we see, uh, again, uh, and, you know, minor encampments starting to pop up. And there is a process that we have evolved between the uh, city services, uh, social services, uh, paramedics, and police. Uh, obviously, safety and the safety of the individuals in the, in any encampment or in in any kind of outdoor living uh, is is paramount. And we want to encourage all citizens to find uh, a place that uh, they can call home uh, sooner rather than later. So we've expanded our our capacity in the uh, shelter space. We've uh, taken on hotel space because of the physical separation issues uh, and, and allowed that to become <clears throat> shelter space in the meantime to deal with some of the, uh, the overflow. And uh, our work continues to find and continue to build, you know, a suitable shelter space and affordable housing uh, throughout our community. So that, uh, that work will continue and we will continue to engage with individuals living on the street uh, that, uh, uh, that can be approached by the paramedics, by police, by uh, social services to in, to talk to them about how they can establish a better living arrangement uh, in in shelters or in affordable housing units that they could get access to. So that work continues, and uh, that work uh, has been going on for a long, long time, and I expect it will continue to happen into the future. Thank you, Mayor Eisenberger. And that concludes our media questions for today. I will invite the media to follow up with me afterwards if they have any outstanding questions. Mayor Eisenberger, I will turn things back over to you. Thank you very much. And you know what? That's a wrap, uh, folks. Uh, you know what we would like to do is, uh, and I don't know why I'm on twice. Does everybody else see me twice? I mean, I hate seeing me once, let alone twice. So uh, um, we're going to take a picture. Uh, so if you all want to stare at the camera and give us your best smile, Gemma, you're taking the picture. Okay. There we go. Thank you all very much. I hope you have a wonderful day. And weekend, go and enjoy the patios and whatever else is available, uh, outdoor spaces, uh, good news on the, uh, the opening side, uh, MP Skelly, things are looking up. So uh, have a wonderful day and weekend. Let's all get a haircut. <laughs> I got the Bye, first, stay safe, everyone. I've got the first appointment on Wednesday. On Tuesday morning. <laughs> I'm number two. <laughs> See you all later. Bye-bye.